Yeah, so so maybe what what will we be discussing today? Any any plans? It's it's kind of focused on you know gelato general overview, providing uh, like general education to the community about like what their product project is all about, um, all the different use cases, um, you know, going in depth into like the protocol. So yeah, maybe what would be interesting for me is. Um... Yeah, what's your show like? Who are like other guests on the show and stuff? And what have you done previously? I haven't haven't got the chance to hear more content, unfortunately. Yeah, we've uh, we've had a lot of different projects on the show, from Alluvium to Axie Infinity, uh, Bancor, Chainlink, um, OpenSea, Rarible, uh, pretty wide range. Uh, awesome. projects on the show yeah so I'm just trying to you know basically provide as much education as possible um to the community uh, i originally just started off as like a group of friends we got access to like the twitter spaces beta and we were just messing mm -hmm. around having fun and it slowly turned into like more of an educational uh show so it's been it's been a lot of fun to just you know connect with everyone across across crypto and and uh, provide you know provide the content because I'm you know I'm sure you you agree that like right now in the space education is is critical. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's cool. I don't know. Uh, I don't know where my co-hosts are, so it's a little a little disappointing. But um, I don't want to waste your time, so. Uh, let's just let's just jump into it. You're stuck with me today, so that's awesome. Uh, yeah, no worries, man. Um, so yeah, like any uh, any new any new guests I always have on the show, like uh, I always want, I'm always interested to know, like how did you actually get started in crypto? Yeah, um, yeah, maybe I can just quickly start. Um, my name is Hilma. I am one of the founders of uh, Gelato. Gelato is a protocol or an infrastructure piece for Web3 that automates smart contract executions on Ethereum. And um, yeah, projects in this space, they use our network, our infrastructure, kind of like as their outsourced uh, DevOps team in order to automate arbitrary stuff from limit orders to liquidation protection to um, heading Avagotchis, right? So there's a lot of different use cases that can be built with Gelato. And yeah, this is basically what, what projects um, use Gelato for. And um, personally, myself, I got into crypto in 2016, roughly. Um, so actually, I wasn't interested too much into Bitcoin or, or Ethereum even back then. Uh, but then I, I kind of stumbled across the DAO. So the first DAO that, that happened back then, Christoph Jens, uh, one of the guys from the Ethereum Foundation, he, he wrote the first DAO back then, right? And as many of you know, uh, there was this huge scandal. It, it got hacked. Um, and yeah, Ethereum kind of like split into two networks after that, right? Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. And yeah, I, I kind of participated in that. I had to purchase my first Ether in order to participate. Uh, like it was at $8 back then. I was like, yeah, what, what is this Ether I have to purchase? I just want to put my, put my euros basically in the DAO. And so, yeah, I had to download everything and this was kind of like the the entrance to the rabbit hole for me. And then since then, yeah, just been building stuff in the space. Um, we started off participating in a lot of hackathons um, all over the world, basically. And yeah, at some point um, we were building um, a lot of like more sophisticated decentralized applications. And we realized that um, for a lot of them, in order to automate certain specific functionalities within them, we needed to build up like these bots basically every single time for each specific use case. And that was uh, a pain and it took a lot of time. And what ended up happening is that um, we were the only ones running these bots. And if these bots would go down, then our whole application would kind of hold. And so we thought, hey, this is a problem that a lot of other developers in DeFi and Web3 in general will have in the future. And why isn't there like one just plug and play solution that you plug into? It's kind of like a decentralized network of bots that you can task to automate arbitrary stuff on Ethereum. And yeah, that's basically what we um, identified back then. And, and since then, we kind of like built it up. And today, 
a lot of cool projects from InstaDab to QuickSwap to Zerion to others use Gelato, you know, to automate stuff um, within their applications or on their UIs. And yeah, this is kind of like how we, how we came about, about Gelato. That's really, really cool. It sounds like uh, you've been quite entrepreneurial even before you founded Gelato when you were in the space. Do you have like a traditional developer background? Um, yeah, actually, um, so Luis and I, the, the second co-founder of Gelato, we uh, started coding within Web3. So like we, I, I actually studied finance um, and uh, I was super interested in kind of like monetary policies and how the banking sector works and how to create options uh, how to price derivatives and stuff like that um and then when i discovered ethereum through the dao i was like okay wow this can be used to build like completely new financial applications from scratch without having to deal with shitty banks and <laughs> and this just like caught uh my attention and then we just like completely experimented with it and we realized okay wow we have to really know how to write smart contracts right um and uh, yeah we like then we just like sit down and taught ourselves how to do it with like uh, courses and just learning by doing learning failing learning failing and over like a period of um i think three years now we got pretty decent at it um and uh yeah so i think we are kind of like native web3 developers right so we um, of course we build a couple of like web2 applications ourselves for fun but like we really just focus the majority of our development time only in web three. So and I will never I never thought about like doing something in web two anymore because it's just far too boring. Um so yeah we are kind of like native web web three developers I would say. I love that man. I, I love the concept of learning and failing over and over again. And that's that's really, really how you you learn and grow. Um, I'm I'm also curious, like, what has the process been for you guys as like a startup with with Gelato? Uh, mm -hmm. Do you kind of walk us through like what it looked like from startup to now? Yeah, it's it's just like for for me, it's 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 all about kind of like persisting and trying out different things and just like sticking to your plan and and trying to really go where you think uh, there is something that could be useful for others and. Like this, how we started is we just like built these applications ourselves, right? And we identified a problem, which was, hey, every single time you want to automate stuff within your smart contracts, you need, a, you need to build bots, you need to run these bots, you need to maintain these bots. And every single developer team out there has to have to do it and it's super repetitive and time consuming. So yeah, there should be this plug and play solution that we kind of like needed um, uh, two to three years ago. That wasn't there and we like okay now let's just build it ourselves and so we did and we uh we were working together with uh, gnosis at the time uh they're doing prediction markets and decentralized exchanges right um and yeah kind of like we were working on a project with them where we where we were asked to automate certain trading functionalities on top of one of their decentralized exchanges that they had back then called the dutch exchange and yeah that's why we like uh for that, we again needed that uh, like infrastructure piece that wasn't there, and then we kind of like just told Gnosis back then, hey, um, rather than kind of like building this specific solution, this like again this one-time system for your application, why don't we, why shouldn't we focus on kind of like building a more generalized version of that that can be used by any Web3 development team out there? And, and Gnosis uh, thought the idea was super cool. And they gave us grants actually to, to kind of like build it up. So Luis and I, we just like received grants from them to finance our um, time basically, right? And we were in Berlin. We also were able to work in their offices in Berlin, in Gnosis offices. They have this huge co-working space there. So we were working there for free, basically living from the food supplies in that office. Um, and yeah, we just kept building. And we got some other grants from Meta Cartel back then as well, who kind of like realized that it might be cool. And yeah, then we just built it up the first couple of um, iterations, uh, got an audit, put the first version on mainnet in, in mid-20, uh, so the first audited version of mainnet, there was another one earlier, but the first audited version of mainnet in, in June 2020. And yeah, then the first couple of projects started integrating us, we raised the seed round, and then we were able to kind of build a team around that. And now we are, I think, uh, quite a decent number of people in the team, got really talented developers and uh, growth experts 
and yeah, now we, we got some pretty nice traction in recent times. And yeah, this is kind of like how we came about. That's awesome, man. It's a real, it's a real true, like, uh, growth story and, um, you know, congrats so far on your, on your success. Um, I am curious, like, it, you know, Gelato is incorporated out of Switzerland. Was that due to like more regulatory friendly environment for blockchain companies or is there any reason behind that? Yeah. So like, as I said, we, we started in, um, Berlin, um, basically at the Gnosis headquarters there. Um, but, uh, yeah, we quickly realized that if you want to kind of like grow a, a project in the long run, if you want to also create a token at some point to accelerate kind of like the growth of your network, then you need a solid legal foundation to, to have your company be incorporated and, you need like the best case is to have some kind of like hybrid of hey you have some on-chain like you have some DAO stuff but you also have a legal entity that can deal with real world things right paying offices uh, or whatever paying real world costs basically and um yes yeah, and we kind of like, identified what's the best way for us to go about and like a lot of projects i don't know they incorporate somewhere in cayman or like some other offshore countries basically um but uh yeah no this this is this this wasn't really an option for us we kind of like wanted to look for something more legitimate um and for us because we 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 also speak german right for us like switzerland offered the most attractive kind of uh, regulatory environment uh first of all it's just like nearby right so it's not not too far from home let's so to say um, and also like here we had ethereum foundation tezos a lot of other projects um, that came before us uh, in like the 2016, 2017 crypto um, bull market, and they did ICOs here. So um, the regulators are, regulators are super proactive. Like we incorporated a company here, we didn't like we didn't need a single dollar or Swiss franc, like fiat money at all. Like we incorporated the, the company with USDC. They accept USDC here. We are paying our taxes in crypto. Um, we pay all our employees in crypto. Like we we nearly never touch fiat, and uh, this is possible here, which is super cool. No, that that's awesome, man. Um, uh, you kind of did touch on this a little bit, but we have a lot of like new listeners who might not be super familiar with like what smart contracts are. Uh, but mm. could you could you touch on like what 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 the deal is with this with smart contracts? Um, and why they're why a third party is needed to execute them? Mm -hmm. Sure. Like smart contracts, sometimes like they're called smart contracts. It's it's a bit misleading. Um, they are actually not that smart. Um, so what what smart contracts do, or what they what their sole responsibility is, is to just simply store some logic and some state within them. And when someone sends a transaction to that smart contract, let's say. Um, an example, for example, is an is a smart contract that just transfers um, uh, 100 UCC to an address, which is your friend, for example, right? And when you call that smart contract, then you send $100 to your friend. Um, but let's say you want to send $100 to your friend every week, for example, right? So usually what you have to do is because you are the only person that has control over your private key and your on your money, right? You would have to um, call that smart contract yourself using your MetaMask wallet or any other wallet you're using every week yourself in order to actually transfer the funds because no one, like you are not, you're not using like a centralized exchange that has access to your funds, right? So only you can execute a transaction. And if you don't execute that logic, then like the smart contracts, they don't execute that logic themselves. They always need that outside impulse in order to actually facilitate the logic that is stored within them. And what Gelato is, is basically just this network that monitors that way you can define certain conditions. So you can say, hey, I want to execute the logic of the smart contract, but I don't, I don't want to execute it right now. I want to execute it repeatedly and conditionally every week. And um, Gelato kind of like then knows this. And then you can say, hey, Gelato, please, on my behalf, can you every week execute the logic of that smart contract, which just transfers 100 bucks to my friend. And then Gelato will just do it for you all uh, over and over again. And you don't have to worry about it anymore. And 
And the other examples are, for example, limit orders on on QuickSwap or Uniswap, right? Uh, basically, you just um, define a price, which is, hey, I want to buy ETH, but I don't want to buy ETH at $3,000. I want to buy ETH at $2,000. And then Gelato kind of like sits there and waits for you. And then when this condition is fulfilled, then only Gelato will execute a transaction for you. So you basically don't have to do it yourself. Yeah, I guess that that's also like a great transition to you guys are working with a lot of DEXs to, to automate, uh, you know, stop losses, limit orders, uh, dollar cost averaging, things of that nature. Yeah. Can you kind of touch on like what it's been like to work with Uniswap and QuickSwap and uh, how have those integrations uh, proven out to be successful? Yeah, sure. So like um, probably our infrastructure is, is, is um, like, don't call me on that, but I, I think probably the most widely used native limit order system in kind of like on EVM based networks. And there are a couple, but I, I think we, we have um, one of the widest adoption rates, I would say. Um, and this is because our limit orders are super flexible, right? And they can be very easily applied to any AMM, like automated market maker type exchange, which is for example, Uniswap, or for example, QuickSwap on Polygon, or there's this network called Phantom, and there are also Uniswap-like exchanges that are called SpookySwap and SpiritSwap. And all of those exchanges, if you go to the website and you go to limit orders, there you basically see limit orders, and then at the bottom, powered by Gelato, which basically means they use our bots to actually fill these orders and execute these orders. And it's just super easy for them to do so. They literally just have to, on their UI, um, do like install a library that we built and then they have limit orders natively on their system within like a couple of hours of work. And usually if you want to build that from scratch as a development team, it will take you like three months or so. And they can just like use that out of the box from us, which is I think super valuable for them. It just saves them a lot of development time. Um, and yeah, it's been great working together with them, especially recently since QuickSwap integrated Gelato, we definitely saw the numbers of limit orders um, hitting all-time highs there, um, and uh, like people love it because everyone loves the user experience of kind of like a Uniswap or quick swap, right? But you don't always want to kind of like set yourself notifications when you can actually go there and execute your trade. You just want to set it and forget it, right? And this is exactly what um, Gelato offers these applications um, to offer their customers, right? And Gelato is this B two B2, B2C. So like our customers, for example, in the case, uh, QuickSwap that integrates us, but then QuickSwap has other customers that then use QuickSwap, right? But under the hood, it's basically Gelato doing it. Yeah. Do you, do you think, do you find that like a lot of your user base is traditional traders or are you seeing enterprises also interested in like mm -hmm. in this automated solution? Yeah. So, um, I think at the moment, um, most of the actual end users are kind of like individuals that usually use these DeFi applications. Um, but I think there's this like slowly more institutions and enterprises are entering the space, right? Because it's just much more efficient and uh, like DeFi, someone like said uh, recently, DeFi will be the back, the new backend for the financial world. And, and Gelato basically aims to be the backend of that backend. Um, and so um, we, we got already approached by a lot of like more institutional projects and, and, and organizations that basically say, hey, we need to automate this. We need to automate that. And like in Gelato, like it's not only limit orders or something, right? Like you can use Gelato to automate anything. And from automating... Uh, weekly salary payments to automate automatically exchanging funds every so often, right? They are like, like I always say like over 90% of all the transactions that happen in like the traditional financial world or even more like 95% are completely automated processes that happen repeatedly and conditionally in the background, right? And, and this is exactly what we predict will happen in DeFi. Um, and this is, basically what we're trying to build the infrastructure for to help these projects with and these institutions with just easily being able to facilitate without having to worry about all the DevOps, all the difficult, expensive, time-consuming part of like managing these, these these servers. And yeah, this is this is what Gelato tries to do. 
Yeah, I, I completely agree for, with your, agree with you that this is going to be massive uh, for the DeFi community. I saw that you guys um, had an in- integration with Ave to automate that the the health factor of your account. Mm-hmm. Um, what does that partnership look like, um, and how has it been like working with Ave to to put that together? Yeah, so. Um... Like we we are we are very close ties, of course, to Ava. Like we've we've known these guys for for quite some time. Um, I think I was actually the um, first developer that, like back then, it was still called Eastland. Um, it was I think 2019 a hackathon at Paris. I think it was I was the first developer that actually messed around with their smart contracts and 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 like built like in 2019 I built like an interest rate swap. PUC using Maker and, and Aave. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and back then, through that, we met the whole team back then. And we are, we are very like close in terms of um, working together on stuff. That's why they also awarded us a, a grant recently um, to kind of like build that liquidation protection automation system for their customers on Polygon, which has been like uh, uh, very um, highly in demand from their users because basically it turns Aave, you borrow funds on Aave and you always have to worry about being liquidated there, right? But it basically turns Aave into Aave without being liquidated, which is super helpful and you can just like sit back and relax again. And so, uh, yeah, that's, that's been super great. Uh, the guys at Aave are obviously amazing. Um, yeah, for example, also like Stani, the CEO, he's an investor in Gelato. Um, so, um, yeah, we, we, we are very close to each other and yeah, we, we definitely appreciate their help uh, and their support a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I feel like a lot of people could be using, um, that particular automation feature with the whole factor. Cause I personally know a ton of people that got liquidated, uh, this, this past year, yeah. um, and literally lost, you know, five, six, seven figures from liquidation. So um, I feel like it is a highly needed feature and it's it's pretty underrated. So um, yeah, it's definitely something that I'll be spreading around to the folks I know because I, I just, I hate seeing people get liquidated and um, no, this is, it's just awesome, man, that you're, yeah. you're really building out all these different types of bots as you, as you call them, but it's all within you know, one system and it's already all pre-built for users yeah. to take advantage of. And, so. and, and uh, our hypothesis here is really that like at the moment, like we just started with, Hey, you, you borrow and you get liquidated. Right. Uh, but like what, what I, uh, what our vision is here is that these like automations, they get, they, they will probably soon be like natively built into these protocols. So like if you use Ava, then, just out of the box, you will have that protection. And out of the box, every uh, every other position might at some point just have like a, a dedicated, you can t- you can think about it as like a dedicated gelato bot in the background that kind of like monitors your position for you. So this is how I see it. So at the moment, it's like, hey, I, I need to set it up like manually once and then it, it happens. But like how I envision this, this is just like a default. It's just you don't even have to think about it. It will be there for you. Um, and yeah, that's why that's that's how I think of it, and and how I think uh, it will look like in maybe like one or two years. Yeah, no, honestly, that that would be huge if it was just integrated into in, integrate integrated directly into the Ava GUI, right? The Ava UI, yeah. you could you could just take advantage of it right there. Um, I think that that would be a huge huge step uh, for your company. So that, that's awesome, man. Um, I also saw that you guys were kind of playing a little bit and like the nft and gaming space to like update leaderboards and and distributing like rewards um any any movement there or any any reason why you want to tap into to gaming as well yeah um so like of course DeFi at the moment is the is the hot topic right um because this is kind of like the first use case for web3 smart contracts and it's super powerful but um like uh, I think in the long run, probably DeFi and finance will will have will still be like it will still be one of the most widely used kind of like verticals of Web three. But like gaming and like NFTs already saw like a steady rise, right? And I think gaming is probably up next. Um, and like in in games, there are so so many just processes that need to 
kind of like start, stop, update, all these small things in the background, right? Um, that need to happen automatically, like over and over again. You need to start new games. You need to update leaderboards. You need to, like, for example, like horse racing, you need to start uh, a race, right? Then you need to update the scores. Then you need to stop the race and, and so on and so on. And all these processes are basically just like transactions that are being sent over and over again to these smart contracts. And with something like Gelato, like these projects could just easily outsource that um, and without having to run any of the underlying infrastructure themselves, just get to the get to that automated kind of like f process flow. And um, at the moment still, I think uh, like DeFi is the most prominent industry in, of Web3, so to say, but like gaming, I think will, will slowly rise up. And that's why we are super uh, excited and are talking to more and more like gaming companies that, that need something like Gelato and yeah, uh, Seascape was the first one now that, that integrated us, uh, but I think there will be a lot more to come. Yeah, I love that because from my from my perspective, I think a lot of people will enter the crypto space through gaming and then uh, make their way over to, to DeFi. The games in themselves are basically teaching people how to do finance at a very you know high level. And if the games are honestly successful, they can teach people how to use all different types of DeFi protocols, um, and then once they've accumulated some wealth within like the NFT uh, gaming universe, though I, I would imagine people would then migrate, the everyday user would migrate over to like traditional DeFi platforms to to stake and you know hope uh, manage their wealth. Exactly, yeah, and and probably like these these Def that we're already seeing that right now, right? These DeFi like loans or liquidity pools or something, they can be completely gamified, right? So I think like Avagotchi, for example, is doing something similar in that regard. Like maybe at some point, uh, it's all like a huge game, right? <laughs> and you are on this interface and there's like a World of Warcraft-like treasury and coins and you have to like hoard them and you can buy stuff with them, but it's just like real money <laughs> and you can, <laughs> you, can, you can just play with that and you can provide liquidity somewhere for people to sell weapons in this game right but it's like all real money and if you're really good at it then you are just earning real cash so um mm -hmm. this is how i kind of like see that and um it will, it will be huge yeah i think it's uh i think it's going to be interesting to see the the younger generation and how they they kind of take it right because like if i was I, I mean as a kid i probably put tens of thousands of hours into <laughs> various yeah. games um, imagine being able to, as a kid, being able to get paid for that, um, and how will like a kid now view their time? Um, and you know, the traditional system, at least in the U.S., isn't very good at teaching people finance um, and how to manage their money. And if they're already learning this through a game, they're already getting income through <laughs> through the through the metaverse in a sense. Um, I just wonder how it's going to really shift like our society and. Um, yeah and everything it's it's crazy man it's we're, we're just at the beginning of of this whole thing yeah and and everyone will be able to participate right some random kid in india uh, might just like build an empire because <laughs> he's just really smart and he just like really understood the game mechanics and and knows where what people want in there right and he becomes the service provider within it so yeah, i think it will be it will be like a tectonic shift in power in, in wealth in, in everything it just levels the playing field for everyone basically and that's why it's also so important that we can like build up all these infrastructure pieces get networks with cheap transactions get infrastructure that helps automate stuff and everything around it so um, yeah all these applications can be built on top of it and uh, the creativity can kind of like flow freely yeah no the the distribution of wealth is an interesting uh, it's an interesting play. You know, I, I really like to think of things as like there's live players and inactive players, kind of dead players. And I think we're creating a lot of new live players that have built up extreme wealth. Like I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if like half of the Forbes, <laughs> the Forbes list in the future was filled with people from crypto and, and Bitcoin and, and so forth. Um, yeah. 
you know, it's very similar to like the big in, the big boom from like the industrial revolution or um you know people who who got tapped into like the oil industry super early on so no it's 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 it's, it's incredible to see um just how many opportunities this is opening up um not just for US but right on like a global a global scale yeah definitely um, I also saw that you guys were, you know, obviously integrated with uh, Chainlink, um, using them for like different price price reference feeds. Uh, I was curious, like, why why you guys went with Chainlink um, over other Oracle solutions on the market? Um, yeah, so I think when we started, there weren't too many <laughs> out there. So when we started, like this whole thing in, in twenty nineteen, um, I think. Uh, Chainlink was the was the only one actually. Like we use one um, Oracle um, price feed, so to say, but it's not like a pri- that's not a price feed. It's actually just the fast gas price of. Um, so basically, Gelato uses an Oracle that tells you what's the current average fast gas price on Ethereum, basically. Um, and uh, yeah, that's just um, it was um, impossible to get. Um, beforehand, basically uh, within your smart contracts, um, and uh, actually, like we we actually went to Chainlink back then and just said, "Hey guys, um, we need that. Can you uh, please hook it up as a as an oracle?" And and they're like, uh, "Yeah, sure, let's let's do it." Um, and yeah, we we also like uh, we hacked together on a, on a hackathon in East Berlin two years ago, and we won the the Chainlink uh, prize there. So, um, so yeah, that's why like they they were the only ones providing that, and they of course offered like a very very good deals for you. Um, though we are actually uh, deprecating that um, pretty soon because um, with the new EIP one five five nine upgrade that Ethereum saw, you actually now get the kind of like uh, base fee. So um, you get the kind of like average transaction fee on chain. Um, and so we are we are probably going to deprecate the price feed um, uh, in in a, in a couple of weeks. But uh, still, I think uh, Chainlink is, is definitely still the uh, probably the most widely adopted uh, Oracle provider, right? In Web three, um, and uh, they are doing a pretty good job at it. So um, and Oracles are definitely needed for a lot of use cases. So I think that's that's definitely uh, something um, that is they're doing really well. No, I love that. A lot of a lot of my listeners are, are like Marines, so we love we love learning right, like, about Chainlink and how it's being integrated. Really, really happy to hear that it's been like a positive um, experience uh, working with them. Definitely. Um, I so I know like within like the Gelato ecosystem, there are executors, you know, developers, D apps, and and to- token holders. Mm-hmm. Um, can you like touch on the roles that each of these individuals play within within the ecosystem? Yeah, sure. So, um, first of all, first of all, you got these DApps, right? These DApps they they integrate Gelato to automate certain aspects of their applications. For example, QuickSwap, right? They integrate Gelato in order to um, execute limit orders um, for their customers. Or inside app integrate Gelato to automate the refinancing of debt positions between Maker and uh, Compound or Arthur, for example. Um, and then there are these um, executors. Executors are basically infrastructure operators that um, are running these clients that we build, and and they constantly monitor all these smart contracts, all these systems, and then they automatically execute certain transactions when they should be executed. Um, They are getting paid, basically, uh, by the DAP or by the customers of the DAP uh, for the transaction costs that they incur, and they earn a a small profit per transaction, basically. So they are generating some revenue. And um, now, at the moment, um, this process is still, like, very much coordinated by us as the development team. Uh, But now, with kind of, like, creating and soon... Um, uh, distributing the Gelato token, the gel token, we will create basically a governance um, module, like a, a DAO that will take over these responsibilities of actually managing these executors, having like a, uh, deciding who can be an executor, what are the rules that these executors have to follow. Um, and the governance basically being like the token holders will have the decision-making power over that. Obviously, we are still a big part of that group, uh, especially at the beginning, right? So we will have a, 
a big influence there. But the, the, the goal here is really that the projects and the dApps that use Gelato the most in the long run become the majority token holders within the system and they um, will have um, the say of, of, of how these transactions should be automated, how are the rules that need to be enforced um, and then need to be followed by these bots uh, in order to basically act in the best interest of the customers, right? Because executing transactions sometimes sounds like a bit easy, but like you can front run people, you can extract value somehow maliciously from users, right? There are a lot of misaligned incentives there. And so kind of like having some oversight over these operators is quite important in our opinion. And this is basically what these token holders have to will have to do, but also these operators to be kind of like aligned in the same interest to the to the token holders. They will have to purchase Gelato tokens themselves, and um, they actually have to stake it within our system. And uh, once they stake it, they have a more economic skin in the game, um, and our governance can actually help hold them accountable if they misbehave. So if they misbehave, and they might kind of like maliciously try to extract value, these token holders, the governance, the devs, the users, they can actually hold them accountable and, and slash them. So they, they, they shouldn't really do it in the first place. Ah, that, that, that makes sense. I'm, I'm, glad, you, I'm glad you touched on uh, the, the token. And you mentioned that there will be, there will be sta uh, staking. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious, like, how, how are you guys planning for the, the staking to work? Mm. So it will be very simply, uh, very simple at the beginning. So um, basically, um, these executors, these infrastructure operators that are running these bots, if they want to participate, then they will have to acquire some gel tokens and they have to stake a certain amount of them. And um, we will kind of like release the first kind of like amounts they have to stake pretty soon. Um, but uh, it will be like a, a decent amount. And uh, they have to acquire it and stake it within the system and they cannot just withdraw it, right? So there's a time lock there. And now they will execute transactions. And if one of the, um, if anyone basically um, realizes that one of these bots is either not executing transactions when they should be executed or kind of like maliciously trying to extract value out of certain transactions that they're executing, then they can submit a proof to um, the governance basically. The governance can have sufficient time to evaluate that. And then if the governance comes to the decision that this bot actually acted maliciously, they can slash the spot and 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 have them accountable for uh, for being um, for acting not in the best interest of the user, basically. So this is kind of like how we are starting there. But I see there's a lot of different elements to that staking um, that uh, we are thinking about uh, of actually implementing uh, integrating within our core protocol. But yeah, we kind of like starting lean there, um, and this is this is kind of like one of the major functionalities at the beginning. Gotcha. And are you guys thinking of implementing any type of like burn burn mechanism for for fees with the token? Um, not not now. So we are not at the moment um, uh, thinking about any burn mechanisms for starters. Um, I think uh, this is maybe something that the the, the community can discuss at a, at a later point in time. And I also think uh, um, something like token burn like what is what is a token burn right but token burn is basically kind of like a it's similar to like a dividend payout um to uh investors or to token holders and for me it's uh it doesn't really make sense at the beginning of a protocol because all the if if there's revenue being generated it should be at the beginning at least reinvested into the protocol itself to actually grow the network right because if you're like investor do you want a large share of like a small project or do you want a small share of like a large project you want a small share of a large project right similar to like amazon not paying dividends or something right or, or facebook um these these projects have one objective it's growing and so they reinvest all the revenue they do uh, may make actually to grow the network right um, and so there, there won't be any any burning uh, mechanisms at the beginning. Maybe the community at some point decides to that that, that they want to do something like that. But um, for, for me at least, I, I don't I don't think so in the near future. Got it. No, no, that makes a lot of sense. Um, when I was taking a look at the white paper, mm -hmm. uh, I found this quote: "The Gelato Network 
the Gelato Network's primary focus is automating smart contracts on Ethereum and EVM-based blockchains right now, but its mandate reaches far beyond that to other blockchain protocols, Layer 2 networks, and even the traditional finance world. It is meant to become the glue that connects all platforms together and makes the transition between them as automated and smooth as possible. Um, can you explain this a, a little bit? Um, it does kind of remind me personally of like Chainlink Keepers. Um, and is Gelato at the end of the day aiming to be like the premier keeper protocol? Um, or is this like the wrong way to be viewing this statement? Yeah, so... Um... I think um, you like the, the quote. I think quite puts it quite well. What what the goal here of Gelato is, right? So we want to become this this backbone, this glue between these networks, automating the f f movement of money between different protocols, right? If like an example would be if my balance on a Polygon rises above a certain uh, threshold, please move some of that to mainnet, right? So. Um, automating not only transactions within protocols, but also across them, and um, yeah, that's the kind of like the mandate, and also not only for like these EVM-based compatible chains, but for all networks that basically have some traction in the near future. This is kind of like what Gelato's mandate or vision is. Um, now, Chaining Keepers is um, uh, a very similar service that um, kind of like re probably also got inspired by Gelato quite a bit. Um, we, as I said, we, we were working together um, with Chainlink for quite some time with a lot of discussions with them. I think they they also came to the realization that um, that uh, Oracles is cool, but probably like automating smart contracts in terms of like transaction volume and everything is probably uh, much bigger in terms of the market size. So I think Chainlink is... Uh, in that regard, probably trying to position themselves in a similar uh, spot to Gelato, though I think uh, like our approaches differ a bit and they might also not be mutually exclusive, right? So there, there I can also see scenarios and um, already see, for example, projects like B Protocol, if you know them, uh, using like Chainlink and Gelato um, for their services to actually execute certain transactions. So, um, I do believe that uh, like uh, this market is going to be huge. <laughs> like the, the market for automating smart contracts is going to be really, really big, and um, there will be a lot of competition here, and there will be a lot of projects trying to become the standard here. And yeah, I think it uh, remains to be seen who will kind of like be in three, four, or five years the kind of like winner of that. Right? Um, you have to move very fast in order to to do that. I think uh, Chainlink has their a really good system in place for them. Um, though um, a lot of things are changing right now and sometimes it's a bit more beneficial to be, be a bit more agile, right? To kind of like have a bit of, bit of flexibility and um, being able to move a bit faster because you don't have like so many legacy systems that you have to serve with like oracles and stuff. So yeah, I think it's going to be a, a big market. Um, uh, the market will be big enough for, for multiple players. Um, Though, of course, I think like one big one will emerge in the long run. And yeah, we'll be seeing who it will be. Of course, we, we can only say that. I think uh, we uh, are here for quite some time already. We have a pretty good idea of what will happen and, and how it will work. And yeah, we, we are thinking in a, are in a good position to, to have a decent shot here. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, man. There's, there's plenty of room in this market for multiple parties to, to eat at the table. Uh, and uh, yeah, man, I, I love everything that, that you guys are doing, and I think it's it's super cool all the all the automation that you guys are that you guys are making accessible uh, for everyday for everyday users. Um, I did want to take like one step back. I was kind of curious um, around like your backers, mm -hmm. um, like what was it like actually like going out um, and getting funding and and kind of pitching. Uh, different VCs like Galaxy Digital to, to actually back up Gelato. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was um, when we got Galaxy on board. That was uh, like Gelato was still uh, in a very infancy, right? Um, so we, we just released our first version of the audited protocol. We just got a couple of first customers on board. So um, it was really back then we talked to a lot of VCs that nowadays we're like all wanted to ape into gelato 
<laughs> but back then basically didn't get it. Um, and some of them did get it, uh, including Galaxy. And like we didn't really need to convince them a lot. They they like immediately got the picture, and uh, they are like really like there's uh, John and, and and Will who are who are really smart investors i have to say and really understand um the market inside out and yeah i think they they got the potential of, of something like that immediately and so there wasn't much convincing to be done they're like hey guys we love the idea we want to support you as, as much as we can and so that was super cool super smooth and the experience with them is also great but we all also have a lot of other cool angels right like noses invested in us then we had Christoph Jensch, as I said, the, the guy who created the first DAO, who was one of the early team of, of, Ethereum, of the Ethereum Foundation back then. Um, we got IOSG Ventures that are also super great. Uh, and now um, we will soon release actually um, the details around our most recent round that we closed. And there we all, we have like really top-notch um, investors uh, in the space as well. And I think, yeah, um, a lot of leading like figures of, of projects and that just shows that they know, like these guys knows what these are. These guys know what what kind of like problem we are solving, right? Because they are building these projects, they they face these issues themselves. So, so I think that should show also the wider wider range, a wider range of people that um, there is something there, and yeah, we are definitely trying to to build the best uh, system to serve that need. No, I love that. I think I think that you have a really unique uh, problem that you are solving, and um, I'm I'm actually really, really impressed that these guys just jumped right on board and to help you guys and and build it out because I definitely think it's some of the work that you guys are doing is quite essential um, to the ecosystem. And um, kind of taking a stance from like a future state, like um, you know where do where do you see Gelato going in like the next five years? I know five years in crypto is is like yeah. <laughs> in our time but uh, you know if you if you had to think like in five years like where where would you where would you like to see like gelato as a as a company yeah i think like in five years doge is probably the world reserve currency um so uh, it's hard to predict what will be what the, how the world will look like in five years but um so what the what the, the real long-term vision here of gelato is and it's basically to be the underlying infrastructure and this glue that actually supports and, and automates the flow of value between the kind of like traditional financial world and um, the Web3, the blockchain world. Um, and that people can completely seamlessly from their bank account, from the fintech applications like PayPal or Revolut or, or whatnot, um, move their money, um, compound the interest that they're earning um, on certain financial products completely seamlessly with their with three applications without having to kind of like manually do all of that themselves and all these all these big players like paypal and, and the fintech players also like tech companies that are moving into um, fintech like apple facebook right um, and then all these new web three projects that are being built up they all have a completely seamless automated user experience for their customers and um, they basically utilize our infrastructure in the in the back end to, to don't have to worry about any of the underlying complexities anymore and this is kind of like where i see gelato as this similar to maybe like you can think about it as how airbnb and or like like airbnb for example runs on like aws on amazon servers right uh, similar that all these applications uh, will be powered by basically gelato bots to automate certain smart contract functionalities. And, and this is kind of like how, how maybe you can think about it. And uh, our hypothesis is this this market will explode. Every system that can be turned into a smart contract will be turned into a smart contract probably at some point. And these smart contracts, they need to be automated. And this is basically what we will are trying to do. Yeah, I, uh, I completely agree with you, man. I think smart contracts are going to caught cut costs uh, for a lot of companies um, and once one co one company is doing it in their particular niche the competition is just going to need to fold um, into that to be to be competitive so it makes it makes a lot of sense to me um, Hilmar at the end of the show I always like to try and bring on some guests from the audience or at least give people the opportunity are you open for that yeah sure Hey, anyone, anyone listening, if you want to ask him a question, just request now. I'll happily let you guys on one at a time. 
give it a few seconds here. What's up, guys? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, you sound great. Welcome to the show, Iron. Yo, Mute, thank you so much for the space, man. And Homar, you too. Thank you for uh, your time this morning. All good. So uh, my, I had a quick question, Homar. My, uh, basically, I just want to know if you think that it's going to be important for the projects that aren't really adding any real val value to the, to the entirety of the space. Do you think it's important for those to be kind of kicked to the curb? so that um, investors could start putting their capital towards uh, projects like Gelato and, and other projects that are going to help grow the entirety of the, of the ecosystem? Um, yeah, I, I think I, I agree with you there, that there are a lot of projects that don't really add too much value or they don't really innovate much, right? There's a lot of, a lot of copy pasting in the space, um, a lot of projects that just try to extract some value from investors that might not be aware um, that, that that what they are investing in, basically. Um, I think um, in the long run, um, the market, uh, I think, will, will just bleed these projects dry, right? Um, you can only fool so many people, um, and then people will just, like, have caught on on it, and they were like, hey, uh, back then it was all these Ethereum killers, right? Um, and, and none of them have high market valuations anymore. Maybe these new blockchains, but they 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 are really some innovation in them, right? Um, but I think for most projects uh, that try to mislead investors, um, they will bleed out pretty quickly. And at some point, these investors will know that they won't put their money in there again. So um, I think it's 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 very easy to like create some hype around projects in the space. So investors should always be careful. But yeah, I think naturally like natural selection of projects will take care of that and um that's why like channels like this where you provide some provide a stage to like solid project is important because they are like people can educate themselves about like good projects and so it's, it's a really good work that you're doing here as well yeah 100 percent, man i totally agree and uh I'm, i also am too excited for the automation that you guys are going to be able to uh provide so thank you awesome appreciate it Thanks for coming on, I appreciate you, man. No problem. Thank you, man. Uh, if anyone else has any questions, feel free to request now. I'll give it a few more seconds. I think that's it, Hilmer. Uh, really, really appreciate you just taking the time out of your day to, to come on the show. Uh, any any closing thoughts you want to leave any, everyone with? Yeah, first of all, thanks a lot for the invite. It was, was really fun. I think it was, it was a great talk um and yeah i don't know if if, if anyone if you um, if you if you aren't in our uh telegram yet or on discount definitely uh, the discord definitely um say hi uh at Gelato network on twitter and there are all the links um we are releasing our our token pretty soon and if you want to be involved in the community of an of an early project um we do appreciate uh, if you come along and you, you try to contribute whatever you can, be it, um, of course, um, building stuff, but also just like spreading the word, um, talking to other projects you like that you think might use something like Gelato. We always appreciate you helping out. And um, I think we have a really cool, uh, small kind of like core community. Um, and of course, a lot of noise because the talk is getting out right now. But I think this will this noise will also fade. And then, if you're interested in just like um, joining the community, then, then definitely come along. We we do appreciate that, and you can definitely add a lot of value to us. That's awesome, man. Yep. Um, and I I also do record these episodes. Are you cool if we post this on you on YouTube? No, sure. Please go ahead. Awesome, man. Um, thanks again, Helmer. I, I hope you have a based rest of your day and appreciate you just taking the time to come on the show. I really, really enjoy just learning about Gelato, all the different animations and um, just your overall company vision, I think, is really, really strong um, and well needed within the space. So it's been an honor, man. I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. Likewise. Thanks a lot for having me on and everyone.